In this video, we'll still be talking about a ball that's being dropped and then it rebounds back. But we're going to be more realistic this time around because when the ball hits the floor, there will be some energy that is converted to heat and sound. So this ball will never return back to, to its original height at point A. Rather, for this case, it will just reach a maximum height at point C, which is lower than height A, 1.5 meters. So another thing we need to take note is air resistance is still considered negligible because for a small height, the speed of the ball will not be so fast, so air resistance will still be considered negligible. Now let's take a look at the velocity time. So at time equals to zero, the velocity is zero, and as you release the ball, it will undergo constant acceleration. So it will be a constant gradient until this point, that's just before it reaches the floor, the speed is the maximum and then because the ball is being squashed when it hit the floor there will be a sudden deceleration then after that you will rebounce back but this height take note the speed that is rebounds is not the same the magnitude is not the same as the just before it hits the ground because some of the energy will be converted to other forms like heat and sound so this speed will be smaller and then as it goes up the speed is decreasing so the velocity will get smaller and smaller until this point at point c it reaches its maximum height at c so this is b and this is a here as for the displacement time at time equals to zero the ball is at the reference point so there's no displacement and as it goes from a to b the speed increases so the gradient which is the speed will get steeper and steeper until this point here and this is the point where the ball touches the ground and there will be a sudden decrease in speed then after that when it rebounds back the speed decreases so it's getting less and less steep and it's going towards its original position so the displacement is getting smaller and smaller but take note the displacement will not be zero it will reach a maximum height of C. So one thing to take note is for the displacement, this will be your 1.5 meters from here all the way here. And this marking here, the displacement is actually 0 0.3 meters because as the ball, this is where from B to C, this distance here is actually 1.2. So take note of that. As you can see, the both graphs are consistent because as you travel from A to B is 1.5 meters and from the velocity time curve, how you represent that, that will be the area underneath the graph, which is a bigger so-called triangle over here. And when the ball rebounds back from B to C, the distance, the height that is traveled is actually shorter. That's why this area here is smaller and is equivalent to 1.2 meters over here. Now let's take a look at the speed time and distance time. So the positive portion, the initial part here will be the same, which is a constant gradient. Then just at this point here is where it's about to reach the floor. And when it hits the floor, there will be a sudden deceleration. And then when we bounce back, it will be different because speed is a scalar. There's no negative portion. So basically you will draw it here and then we will rebounce with this speed and then as it goes up the speed gets smaller and smaller until at point c over here this point b and this is point a so let's go to distant time graph so as mentioned in the previous video the distance covered by the ball is always increasing so the first part will be the same then after that there will be a decreasing speed as it is being compressed and then it will release and then it will continue to decrease in speed as it goes up until point C. Point C over here, this is B and this is A. So this is in general how the distant time curve will look like. 